It's me again. I hope you're having a great, amazing day and are all prepared, all oiled up, all naked and ready for a bloggy, bloggy, bloggy blog. Yes, it's Saturday. Uh, I've been playing some uh, Skyrim. Um, yeah, I'm close to my one well, my monetization now. I think I was 24 hours away, but hopefully it doesn't suddenly go down because no other subs go up and down. Who knows if the bully, if the watch hours are going to go up and down as well? Because I think it's a calendar year, isn't it? So it could be that there's a really good day, and then there might be some crap days coming up. I don't really know. But anyway, keep watching my videos. Uh, but I can't remember exactly where I got to. Um, I think I got up to this one in my house of mystery. I don't think I showed this yesterday. Uh, a couple of people were saying that they was in um, the the premiere of my blog last night and I was wondering where I was. I actually went to sleep about half past nine last night. I couldn't keep awake any longer. I was up since 4 a.m. So of course, going to sleep at half past nine, I woke up this morning at half past one in the morning. <laughs> so I've now been awake since half past one in the morning because why should my body clock do anything sensible? <laughs> These are, they don't. My body clock doesn't do anything sensible whatsoever. Um, Anyway, still in the uh, box number six, the horror box. This is the origin of Blade. Uh, a couple of, um, a couple of. This is number thirteen. So when did he debut? Is it number eight that he debuted? Number eight, number nine, and this is the first time telling of his origin. Of course, born in a brothel in London, in Soho, London. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he makes him British. There you go. So next time you cast him Marvel, make sure to give him a British accent. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not sure how long he was living in America for. Because most of the, these uh, Dracula's are actually in, in, the, in London, aren't they? Or were based in the UK, from what I remember reading of them. So I'm assuming he was in London for quite a time before he ever relocated to America. I don't know, though. Uh, the End of the World, Curse of the Weird. You are a zombie, uncanny tales of terror. I think this is a retelling of the... Is it Simon Garth? The zombie character, I think it's called Zombie. I think it's called Simon Garth from Marvel. I did this for one of my um, 13 nights of Halloween. This is a cool, the, the first issue specials. I wouldn't mind picking them all up at some time, but this is a group of freaks called the Outsiders before the actual Batman and the Outsiders. Uh, no, you can't come out. The world's not ready for you yet. And it was just a one-off story. Kind of a cyclical story as well. It starts off with them sitting watching TV. And it goes around. And at the end, they're watching the TV again. And like, it seems like a sort of, kind of cyclical story almost. Um, here is... Here is the original Swamp... Oh, no, it's not. It's a Silver Age classic. Oh, yeah. How could you tell? <laughs> yeah, not even a proper facsimile. It's just, uh, I'd rather have a facsimile, I think, but never mind. It's all good. Uh, right, ghosts. The murder inspectors. Phantom who saw his future. The spectre wore a badge. And James Dean's curse on wheels. That's right, I remember this. It was talking about James Dean's car, as well as him dying. It apparently rolled off the... Rolled off the risers a few times and crashed a few people. It fell off a blinking... Uh, a car transporter and crushed the driver, something like that. Some, you know, some some strange tales associated with it. How true or apocryphal they might be is, uh, I don't know. But it has got um, a folklore behind it as being cursed. His cursed car. Uh, Doctor 13, the ghost breaker. Even though we know there's ghosts in DC because, you know, you've got Spectre and Dead Man and... Gentleman Ghost, there's so many other ghost characters. This is a character, Doctor 13, who doesn't believe in ghosts. And all the ghosts that he encounters all turn out to be hoaxes or pranks or, you know, Scooby-Doo like people with masks on. <laughs> yeah, I would have got away with it if it wasn't for that pesky Doctor 13. Uh, and yeah, and here is the actual Spectre in the ghost book with... I think it's in a separate story. No, it says here, the Doctor 13, the Ghost Breaker versus the Spectre. So are they actually in the same story together? There is only one way for you to save everyone, Ghost Breaker. You must prove that I do not exist. There you go, a bit of a weird crossover. 
Spectre and Ghost Break, you're the Spectre seemingly the villain. You will believe in ghosts, new tales of the weird and supernatural. <laughs> and this one says, we challenge you to read ghosts on the top of that one. <laughs> right, oh, uh, well, this is unexpected. There you go. It's unexpected. I told you it was unexpected, didn't I? <laughs> Colour the snow red. Have you the nerve to face the unexpected? And there's a snowman with snow packed around a, a dead body. Uh, have you the nerve to face the unexpected? And there is a... Uh, Here's a couple of young ladies, it looks like. A couple of girls have gone into a haunted house. And I'm pretty sure they're about to wish that they hadn't. <laughs> I think they're gonna, their hair's going to turn white. Uh, have you the nerve to face the unexpected? The evil eyes of night. I'm pretty sure that cover's got nothing to do with the story. I'm pretty sure I remember... Yeah, nothing to do with the story. There was nothing. I think he for a, for a minute he dream, he thinks that it's some spook, but it's, it's some guy robbing a house and he witnesses it and yeah, there's murders. That's what I could say. Yeah, it's a strange ring. The snake coming out of it. Mm. You're a fabulous writer. How would you make your vampire tale so believable? That, my dear, is a secret which you shall soon discover. In this issue, my ghost writer, the vampire. <laughs> uh, have no fear, lad. Tis only a myth about the deaf bird coming to claim a victim. Three suspenseful tales. The deaf birds are coming. The deaf birds are coming. Uh, terrifying tales from the House of Secrets and the Witching Hour in this issue of Unexpected. Plus a new Johnny Peril adventure. Go ahead, Peril, shoot, I dare you. A return trip through hell in the second possession of Angela Lake. Oh, she's possessed. A uh, weird western tale starring Scalp Hunter. Scalper, doomed to die a flaming death in Weep the Widow. I'm not going to be considerate and shoot you. Instead, I'll let you roast. Hmm... And there's another unexpected, 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 unexpected. I think before he gets killed, uh, your the ex-president, well, he was the president at the time he was killed, um, oh, bloody hell, Abraham Lincoln gets taken into the future by aliens or something like that. He was quite a good one. Right, a couple of weird mysteries. You'll find your fearsome fate lurking in weird mystery tales. Jason's been dead for 30 years. You can't go on living like this, all alone. But I'm not alone. No, she's not alone. <laughs> Jason's still there. Look, there he is. Can you not see him? <laughs> uh, you'll find your fearsome fate lurking in weird mystery tales. Quite often these covers are a bit, discon a bit misleading. In fact, in this tale, she's the werewolf, not the people bashing in the door. <laughs> she's actually one of the werewolves, so, and her kids. <laughs> right, oh yeah, this one's quite misleading as well. Kids hiding from uh, a scarecrow. But what it is, the, the kids are, con are convinced that the scarecrow is uh, uh, comes alive. And um, this, like, ne'er-do-well kind of scares them with it. But then he kills somebody and he goes to hide in the scarecrow to, to, to lay low. And the kids come up while, he, while he's there and stab it with a pitchfork and say, look, he's not alive. We was imagining things, he's not alive at all. And trudging off. And, and they're not wrong because it's no longer alive. <laughs> so that was that's quite a pretty good... Um, Pretty good um, twist, what would you call it? Where are you, Mr. Ison? It's time for dinner. I can't remember this one at all. It's a bloke has been turned into a crocodile. Uh, I can't remember how that occurred. Uh, we're safe. That thing will never escape. The Freedman's Monster. That was a bit of a weird tale. Their monster was their... They were, when they were young, they were very wild and committing, you know... P pushing the boundaries of acceptability and uh, and the monster sort of says you know you you've got to knuckle down and behave yourself and I I'm your monster I'm I'm your the things that you didn't do that you shouldn't have done blah blah it was very weird and then their, their kids end up having a monster because they're gone off the rails as well and they have a monster which 
they, oh, I don't know, manifest, all their bad points are manifested into this monster so they no longer have those bad points. Um, yeah, something like that. Kind of. A fright for sore eyes. It's midnight, the witching hour. I carved your Rax replica as ordered, new dictator, but you didn't know when it what is, I mean, I didn't read that very well at all. I carved your wax replica as ordered, evil dictator, but you didn't know when it's max welted. Max welted? When it's wax melted, so would you. Totally spoiler on the inside story, that one. <laughs> I did this as another one I did of my 13 nights of Halloween. And this is a really cool, I love this one, with all the skeletons in the jury and the judge. Bringing the prisoner to face his judge and jury. That's really cool. Even the fact that the, the, the skeletons can and a price stamp on the side of its head does not detract from the uh, the awesomeness of this cover. Detract, distract, yeah. And here's a, a Black Hammer story from Dark Horse Comics. I had to get this because it's Cthulhuese. So it's Cthulhu, but it's a little Cthulhu girl called Louise. So it's Cthulhuese. <laughs> yeah, rather strange. And then we got issue one of the Ice Cream Man, second print in. Hopefully this is going to become huge and this book will end up being worth hundreds of pounds. And I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm really glad I picked that up now. <laughs> right, let's see if this I show some more. Um, yeah, let's just show one more because that will get me to a little run that's in there. So this is a cursed comic cavalcade number one that came out a few a couple of years back. Is it 2018 or something like that? An 80 page giant. Uh, featuring Swamp Thing, Guy Gardner, Satana, Heroes Meet Horror, 10 Terrifying Tales. Uh, yeah, nothing but like a little bit of alliteration. Well, um, so that's the comics for today. I might have a less bigly channel if I remember. I haven't got one thought up at the moment. Um, I've got to do the beer show, I've got to upload this video, I've got to get it all together. So hopefully there'll be a small channel uh, in the description down below and there'll be a link for it in the corner afterwards it'll be me doing a jingle if I'm not asleep because I am feeling rather tired now <laughs> anyway it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon I've been up since 1.30 so that's a that's a full day already probably and I've, got to, I've got to drink some beer now and, <laughs> and cook my dinner oh man anyway so I'm out of here uh be another video later on as well with my um oh, i've got to actually set the time for that as well with my um and i've got to put the notes in it oh sausages uh my one of my boxes a couple of my mystery boxes that i'm putting together you can see what i've put in them and uh, let me know if you think that what's in them is worth the money basically that's what i need you to do right i'm out of here till next time may all your news be good news and no, that's it. That's the end. I don't say anything after that. Have a great, amazing day, and may all your news be good news. That's better. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you go and sub up Alex Big Blue? Yahoo! Sign up Alex Big Blue. They probably all subbed him already. But do it again.